Hello, my name is George Nicholson. I'm part of a team here at Workin trying to restore old computer systems and training systems. After the Second World War, through the 50s and 60s, engineers had to learn a new skill, or new at the time, digital electronics. Today everything's digital, smartphones, music, everything comes digital, movies, etc. But then it was cutting edge, brand new. With that in mind, in the 1960s, Digital Equipment Corporation introduced their logic laboratory, the trainer. So this is the back of the logic trainer. And what you can see in the back here are all these sockets. There's lots of the sockets. So you can imagine, if you were to fill this up with lots of logic boards, you could build really complicated circuits. And these are the sort of circuits you get as part of the logic lab. Uh, this one here, for example, is a thing called a flip-flop. The one in there is a NOR gate. Another one over here is a thing called a NAND gate. We have, in here as well, we have pulse amplifiers. We have all sorts of logic circuits that these young engineers in the 60s needed to learn about. Now, as you can imagine, if you filled all these sockets up, you could build really complicated circuits. And that would be, well, it would be a perfect training exercise for any engineer. Strangely enough, although it's 50 years old, you could actually use that today. Because today, the, although we use integrated circuits and we don't use these, we still use the basic techniques. We still need to know the basic logic techniques that those engineers 50 years ago learned. So, what is a logical trainer? A logical trainer enabled engineers in the 1960s to learn all about this new digital electronic skills. How they did it was with these boards. Now these boards would actually fit into computer systems in the 1960s. And young engineers at the time had to learn how these worked. So, behind here, we plug these boards in. And then we wire them up. We have cables and so on that we can wire up. And the engineers would use this, the Logic Laboratory Handbook. They would follow the instructions in this, and then they would find out all about logical circuits. So I've wired one up previously. And this circuit, this Logic Gate, is called an OR gate. And it's called an OR gate for the simple reason this is the output here, and these are the two inputs. So output and two inputs. And it's called an OR gate because if one of the inputs is on, then the output is on. If both are on, then the output is on. The only time the output is off is when both inputs are off. So, one, or the other, or both, and the output is on. Why would you use that logic circuit? You'd use that actually today. You'd use it in such things like burglar alarms. So for example, if that input there was say the door sensor, and that switch there was say your window sensor, then if either the door sensor or the window sensor came on, the alarm would come on. That would be the door, that would be the window, that would be them both. So you'd get an alarm when one or the other or both. So you'd actually have a, you could connect this up to make a work, working burglar alarm. And that's the sort of skills those engineers were learning. That's just one gate. And if you, that was all you could do, that would be very trivial. But the magic thing was you could connect lots of these gates together to make more and more complicated circuits. And those complicated circuits in the 1960s and 70s weren't just used for, to build computers, they were also used um, in production plants, process plants, uh, conveyor belts, engineering. So I've wired up another little circuit here to try and illustrate that. The basic problem in the industry could be this. You've got a tank containing a product. Now that product might be worth £10,000, £100,000. 
But if the temperature of that tank was to go over a certain limit, you would lose all that product. Now the temperature sensor might only cost £100. So if you had a faulty temperature sensor and it showed a wrong alarm, you would dump all that batch, losing 10,000 quid worth of product. You didn't do that. That would just be stupid. What they did was, they'd have a majority system. They would have three temperature sensors on the tank. And they would only dump the tank, trip the tank, if more than one of the temperature sensors went into alarm. So in this little setup here, these first three switches here, they represent the temperature sensors. And this one here, the output, that represents the dump valve. So that way you'd lose your product. But if your temperature went over that certain amount, you'd have to lose it anyway. So let's see what happens. Three temperature alarms. One comes on. The main alarm hasn't come on. Another one comes on. Main alarm hasn't come on. Another alarm comes on. The main alarm hasn't come on. In order for the alarm to come on and dump the product, you would need two or more alarms. So that's called a two out of three system, or a majority alarm system. It actually measures the three different sensors, and only if two or more go into alarm, will it dump the tank. And that was the sort of thing uh, that these young engineers in the 1960s, these skills they were learning. How to build these circuits up, how to construct them, how to fix them, and how to check them. And here at Wigton, what we're doing is we're trying to restore these wonderful systems all the way back to get, uh, working order again.